There's no gentleness from Jesus. There's no love for him. We are just telling it, maybe correctly, like it is. And so we ought to. But the purpose should be the same as that of Jeremiah, which we studied last evening, for the redemption of God's people Amen. and for the world. And I know that you're praying that that will be the manner in which my presentations today are made. Because I love God's people. As I come here to Rolling Hills Church and to many other churches on every continent, it's still the greatest family to belong to, isn't it? God's got His people everywhere and those of us who travel to every continent has been my privilege preaching the Word. We can see the very small remnant coming together under the power of God and it's a thrilling experience. We don't expect to see the majority. That has never been God's promise or His foresight. But His remnant is preparing and preparing for the awesome time which is ahead. The subject of this presentation is the Feast of Trumpets. And I want to read again as Pastor O read from the 23rd chapter of the book of Leviticus and the 24th verse and on. Speak unto the children of Israel saying, In the seventh month in the first day of the month shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. There were three series of festivals the spring festival in the first month of the Jewish calendar, which commenced on the 14th day of the first month, as you will see if you just look at the 23rd chapter of the book of Leviticus and the 5th verse in the 14th day of the month at even, it is the Lord's Passover. Interestingly, the Passover was not a ceremonial Sabbath. And thus it had to be because never would the Jews have permitted an execution upon a ceremonial Sabbath. But the next day was, as you will see in the 6th verse and on, and on the 15th day, that's the day after the Passover, of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. It is the first day... In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It was a Sabbath day. And then on the 16th day came the third feast. And we read about that in the 10th verse. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall be, bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So here were three consecutive days. On the 14th day of the first month in the spring festivals, was to be the Passover. On the 15th day was the commencement of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was a ceremonial Sabbath day. And, if, and then on the next day, the 16th day of the month, was to be the waving or the feast of the first fruits. What a wonderful type of the three days in which Jesus was placed on the cross of Calvary on the Friday. He rested in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea through the Sabbath on the 
15th day, and on the 16th day, the Feast of First Fruits indicated that he was to be the first fruits of those risen from the dead. Many people today, even in the Seventh day Adventist church, are somehow getting themselves into winds of doctrine and believe that Christ died on Wednesday and rose on the end of the Sabbath day. And they believe this is a great testimony against those who say that Jesus did not rise on the first day of the week. Therefore, there is no validity for Christians to say that they are worshipping on Sunday because Christ rose on that day. Brothers and sisters, we do not have to distort Scripture. If we take these three days, which were the type, there were only two nights between them. Furthermore, the Bible plainly teaches that there was not three days and three nights, full days and full nights. For if you go over to the 24th book, uh, 24th chapter of the book of Luke, discussing the experience of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, you'll remember that Cleopas and his friend did not recognize Christ and they were trying to explain that to Christ which he had been the center of. And so they said in the 21st verse, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. They were walking on the first day of the week. That is absolutely clear from Scripture. Now you can cut it any way you like, but there's no way you can commence at Wednesday and call the next Sunday the third day of the week. No way whatsoever. And when Seventh-day Adventists listen to the worldwide church of God's foolish statement, which is contrary to the plainest word of Scripture, what is wrong with us? especially when the spirit of prophecy confirms that Jesus died on Friday. On Friday. My dear brothers and sisters, you may say it is a little matter, but all error leads to apostasy. It is the thin edge of the devil's wedge, and I pray that if there's any individual here who's listening to this message in this auditorium or without this auditorium who have been fooled by the foolish sophistries of others concerning this matter. Oh, how I pray that we will study the Word of God. When something new comes, something that is, is, uh, sort of touches our interest, my dear brothers and sisters, get your heads into Scripture and into the spirit of prophecy and then find out what is truth and believe it. And so that was the first festivals, those mighty festivals surrounding, surrounding the death of our Savior and his resurrection. And then, of course, there was the summer festival of the Passover, 50 days later. But now we are down in the autumn festivals or the fall festivals, as we might call it in this country. And these festivals commenced on the first day of the seventh month, as we have just read. And you'll notice what the commencement of those festivals was. In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. And then it tells us in the 27th verse, and also on the 10th day of the 7th month. So there are nine days between the first day of the month, the 7th month, and the 10th day of the 7th month. There shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. 
We are living today, my dear brothers and sisters,